buying Prime 1 Transformers. Don't start buying Prime 1 Transformers. Don't start buying Prime 1 Transformers. Well, shit. Now, before we get started with the assembly, I did do an unboxing, but it wasn't that entertaining. But if you want to see it, check this out. Here's what the art box looked like. It was an okay art box. It was extremely heavy, packed very well. The shipper actually had grease all over it, and I don't know if that was from the distributor or the shipping company. It was two layers of foam. Here's the top layer. As you can see, tons and tons of pieces. And then the second layer, which is the base, and then finally, here's a picture of all the pieces laid out on the table. So we have 40 pieces here, and if you're new to the channel, we say directions are for pussies. Well, today, meow, gonna have to use them. And let's get the dual cameras going for you guys. Hopefully the focus is better. I filmed uh, XM Studios Bane unboxing. Go check that out right here. And we're not going to, I don't know if I'm going to do it step by step. It's been so long. So first, the Decepticon symbol right on the front there. It's a very strong magnet. And it looks like next we are going to find his legs. Which I don't know which is, this looks like a leg to me. Definitely, and this looks like a leg. Hmm. Pretty easy. And this is why we should look at the directions. Maybe it goes back here. Actually, it looks like you're supposed to put the legs on the body first. Can't even tell which part is the top of the body. Probably like that. All right, that's pretty secure. And right here. I'm fasting right now uh, and on energy drinks, so I'm a little shaky. But voila. Wow, that was steps uh, like one through six, I think. There we go. And it appears there is something small we put on the legs. God knows which one of these freaking pieces it is. This is going to be a nightmare, to be honest with you. Yeah, the instructions... Here, I'll do a close-up. Check this out. So it doesn't, it shows you putting in certain pieces to wear, but it doesn't show which pieces you're supposed to grab. And most of them are actually covered up by the uh, person's hands. So shame on you, Prime One, for not doing good instructions. This is why I don't use uh, instructions or directions. It's kind of a waste. I don't even know what pieces they're putting in. And all these pieces look so similar as well. All right. So it appears these small uh, metallic pieces right here go on the back, kind of a uh, almost like an eagle uh, talon or claw, I think. So this one's probably backwards. Hmm. So one goes up, one goes down. I don't know interesting see that that's how they fit though 
and the instructions look like they're actually both down. Which would make a lot more sense. All right, there we go. I don't know if that's right. I actually skipped a step. So steps seven and eight, there is some unknown piece that you also put into the foot. Looks like the back of the foot. Yeah, so we're gonna have to come back to that piece. The only piece that looks like uh, the pitchers is this one right here, and it does not, there's no slot to put it in. Oh, look at that. I spoke too soon. I see. Do you see it? I see it. Right on there. And same with this one. A little bit loose and it's not quite sitting on the ground. Somebody commented when I posted a picture of this that this is more like putting together Legos. It's actually, uh, <laughs> it's, it's more difficult than Legos in my opinion. All right, so the next is on the back on his ass. Looks like we have two plates that need to go in. And like standard issue on the instructions, they don't give you a good shot of the plates because their hand is covering it up. So I'll have to try and find something that just matches those keyholes. Well, that matches it pretty well. Right there. And a secondary one. Those aren't the right ones, then God help me. Next is his shoulder pads, which are the cop lights. That should be pretty simple. You would think. I would much prefer just to figure this shit out on my own than actually look at the uh, directions here. Nope, oh, still the back of the body. All right. So one inserts right here, and the other right here. We're gonna pause it right now to give the secondary camera a better view. Pause. Okay, so that should be a better view. Uh, next piece looks like uh, the front torso. It's hard to tell, like I said, you know, shame on Prime 1. These instructions are pretty bad, to be honest with you. The hands are kind of covering it up, so <laughs> probably similar to the way you guys are uh, viewing it as I assemble it. There it is. That piece goes right there. I'm not looking forward to uh, assembling the rest of the Transformers. I believe that's correct. Kind of hard to tell. Then we have a piece like this that is going to clip right into the middle. That one was easy enough. And then we have his portrait. And it looks like we're going to put a uh, kind of a crown on top of his portrait first. So that slid right in. And and that is one thing I do know uh, from watching some other videos, most of the heads are a little bit turnable. That seems pretty loose, but I think it's still correct. We'll find out if we have missing parts. Then next, his windows right here. Looks like they go up next to his head. Look for a little keyholes. You know, it's interesting trying to do this where I can see it and both cameras can see it. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. 
I am not digging that though. Alright. So we have those in. Then next his arms. That should be easy enough if we can figure out which one is right and which one is left. Knocking this out a lot faster than I actually thought we would. Coming together nicely. Now it looks like we are going to put his fingers on a hand. Now this is color coded, which is extremely nice, and so are the fingers. I noticed that when I was unboxing everything. That would have been a nightmare. So I need to make sure I get the right colors for the right hand. Can I give a heads up how that works? So this hand we have white, red, blue, and yellow. Hmm. I wonder if I have the fingers the wrong way. Here is red, which is kind of like a thumb finger. Oh, really close to the mic. That will be with the other hand. One of the things I noticed is uh, whenever I do an assembly or an unboxing video, I uh, make a lot of faces, especially with my tongue. I've got good tongue action. So this other one, the colors appear to be Kind of a, a, a interesting green color, another purple, an off red, which is more of a pink, and this last one. So here's the claw, and I assume these go on his hands somehow. So let's find the keyhole for that. I think they go right in the center of the tire. So it's pretty loose. Hopefully it doesn't fall. I could see the shattering really easily. Not loving the uh, engineering or the design on this. Hmm. I'm going to actually take his arm off to assemble this one. Yeah, some really loose parts here. Interesting. All right, we got the hands together. And next we have kind of these uh, shoulder blades, shoulder pads. I don't even see how they connect. Ah, little keyhole up there. So supposedly, this could be the other side. Like that. Little keyhole up top. I almost feel like uh, this would have been a lot easier not going with the instructions, which I, I say that a lot. The uh, I think directions kind of throw you off. So we got those in, and now we have a number of uh, plates. We gotta figure out where these guys go. Two, six, we got six of them. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm not even seeing on the directions where they are at. They might actually connect to each other. Which 
is interesting. Hmm. It works, it semi-works. I don't know if you can see that over there. Probably not with him in the way. So what I'm referring to is they have a little magnetic keyhole on this piece. But I would think that would, uh, that's where it has to connect to the body somehow. So maybe not. Did I miss a step? I don't think I did. All right, right arm. I wonder, ooh, that might be it. That's it. So tiny little piece right here, apparently goes right there. And I'm guessing it's gonna be the same for the counterpart on the other side. Yep, right in there. That's decent. And then we have the mirrors that seem to go right below the lights. So right here. And then we have two extra pieces we have not used yet, so that'll be fun to figure out because I didn't even see them in the directions. there and these guys I'm fairly certain were nowhere in the directions They were not. Thanks a lot, Prime One. These two pieces. So we're going to shut this down, and then we are going to do a review of Barricade. Okay, it is time for the review of this Prime One Studios non-scaled Transformer. This is Barricade from the original Transformers movie. Let me give you guys some background on all this stuff of why I bought it, uh... The, the movie itself. So first of all, uh, when the original Michael Bay Transformers movie came out, the first one, I loved it. And actually, I'm in the process of re-watching it right now because I made all of these Transformer purchases. If you want to know which ones I bought, go ahead and check out this link up here. But uh, uh, it's a great movie, in my opinion. The second one is kind of eh, the third one's kind of eh, and then it gets to trash after that. But there's a certain point where you can love the character, but not necessarily the movie. For example, uh, some of the Predator movies are like that. Or Alien vs. Predator Re Requiem. The Wolf Predator is awesome, but the movie sucks. Uh, same with the uh, newest movie, The Fugitive Predator. Not only The Fugitive Predator, I like that character, but I like the uh, ultimate Predator that went after him and killed him. Now... Uh, went ahead and purchased him. They only made 300 of these and there's no exclusive or collector's version. It's just 300 total and he seems to go for a lot, but I got really lucky. I reached out to Shane at Secret Compass, uh, which is a North American distributor and uh, he not only did he have it in stock, but he had it in stock for retail and he's uh, about 40 miles from me. So I had it the very next day, which is pretty cool. Uh, so great customer service by them. And I just saw someone selling this for $2,500. So it's, yeah, they may have some in stock. Go check them out. But uh, purchased him. He is from the first Transformer movies, as I said. And this is Michael, Michael uh, Bay's interpretation of the Transformers. And I really enjoy it. I like it a lot. I like these uh, better than the uh, classic versions, even though I grew up with the Transformers. Right now, Pop Culture Shock Toys, XM Studios, they are doing the classic versions of them. And even Prime One Studios has the Generation 1, the, the originals. But I like the movie versions. That's what I'm sticking with. For the longest time, I didn't want to go down this rabbit hole. 
What I mean by that is I didn't want to go into the Transformers line. I originally started it a few years ago. I got their lockdown statue. And uh, here's the piece right here. And I actually still own it, but it dropped and shattered. So I kind of gave up on the line because they're so expensive and they take up so much room. But I, it was the Prime One Studios Winter Sale. I actually got the Optimus and Galvatron. So I kind of opened up that can of worms. Like I said, on that link I showed, you can go check out which ones I actually ordered. But uh, very excited to have this piece. And I think Barricade's badass. I like the fact that he's a police car. I liked his character in the movie. And he just looks very menacing, which we're going to talk about. So we're going to review him using the Extreme Scale. If this is your first time to the channel, this is the Extreme Scale. T on the far left is essentially a 1 out of 5. It's trash. And X on the far right is 5 out of 5. It's extreme. Anything VW or X is a good score. And let's dive right in. Uh, let's get dimensions first. I don't have a lot of other background info because you guys saw it with the assembly. But he's approximately 19 and a half inches wide. And that would make his depth about 16 and height, his tallest point is right at 25 inches. Now one of the things I saw, actually we're, we're gonna talk about in the design. So let's jump in. The first thing we cover is concept. What's the concept of this piece? And it's a movie piece. And as we talked about before, if you're gonna do a movie piece, it better be pretty damn accurate. And I assume this is because it's licensed by Hasbro and whoever uh, was in charge of the movies. I don't know if it was Universal or whatnot. But first we have a base, and the entire line has this, this type of base. It's very uh, futuristic, Transformers. I believe they all have a uh, either Decepticon or Autobot uh, symbol on the front, just like this one does. There's some wires, some mechanisms. And as we move up, they're all museum poses. A museum pose means that he is standing there for a picture as opposed to a dynamic pose where he's in the middle of an action. And he is transformed into the robotic aspect of him. And in the movie, the robots can, uh, they look very different. So they come as kind of a generic form and then they transform or they take a vehicle or a, uh, a mechanical technology. And then their new robot version is similar to what they were in that this was a police car. He played a big role in the first Transformers. It was the only movie he was in, which is unfortunate. Because as you see this guy, he's very menacing. You see all the different parts of the police car. You see all the different parts of uh, his robotic self from his arms and legs and hands. It's really cool. I like his portrait a lot. And I, I believe it's a light-up portrait we're going to look at in a second. So I think, did they... Uh, show the character really well absolutely i like the fact it's a museum pose obviously you'd like to uh be able to have this transform but that's just not going to happen let's be realistic and i think they stayed close to the movie i'm in the uh as i said i'm in the process of watching this and i'm only about halfway through it takes me a long time because I'm, I'm so much stuff going on but i think it looks very accurate so concept i gotta be honest with you i think it's an x it's a five out of five they nailed it they stuck really true to uh, the movie. Now we're going to talk about the design. With the design, we talk about does it go together well? Does it make sense? Uh, does everything fit? And as you saw during the unboxing, there's a lot of loose parts. Like, for example, these, these claws are pretty loose. I think they won't fall out, but that's kind of a concern. His head is loose, but that's so you can turn it. So it's kind of a nice feature. He can look left or right or any direction you want. Um, his fingers also seem like they could fall out pretty easy. I mean, you see this shaking. That's, I think that's a design issue. Uh, the direction sucked ass. I did find out where those other parts go. They actually go underneath his torso on top of his legs. So I think if you're going to show, have some kind of instructions, don't have the person's hand covering up what piece it's supposed to be. Maybe label the pieces like XM Studios does, number one, number two. Uh, one cool thing, there are no switch outs or anything like that, but his head has a light up feature. So here's, here's a picture of his head not lit up, and then here is a picture lit up. And it's really easy to turn on, it's just a button on the top. But as you saw, all the light up feature, not, not only is it pretty poor, but 
It doesn't come with the batteries you need. At least I didn't find them in the box. So if they were in the box, I'm, I'm mistaken. But $1,500 statue, you can't throw in a couple you know, dollars worth of batteries. And not only that, but the instructions said they use LR44s, the kind of the watch batteries. It's not LR44s, it's LR41s. So they're telling you to go buy the wrong battery, which that's a huge issue. Um, this, uh, some of the other transformers, I believe, and I'll find out when I get them and we'll review them together, you can display without the base where it's just a flat footing. This one is not the case. You have to have the base. And I always worry because the legs are holding the body to, uh, up and one leg is not secure. It just sits on the base. So I think that's a design flaw as well. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of this design. I think that there's definitely some opportunities. I think they should have done better instructions. I think that it showcases everything, but that's more conceptually. So I think the design's a bad grade. I think it's a U, a two out of five, an ugly. The fact they have a light up feature that they don't supply batteries or they tell you to get the wrong batteries and it doesn't light up very well. Uh, there's some loose parts. Not really a lot of display options, and the base just takes up a lot of room. Now let's talk about the paint and sculpt, and this is going to be a little weird for me. It may be weird for you too, but it is a sculpt, but it's not like there's not anatomy. There's not a, a costume with folds and, and boots and things like that that we traditionally do. So it, I'm just going to start at the bottom and go to the top and... The paint is phenomenal, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but we'll talk about the paint and the sculpt together, and then as we move up, we'll grade them at the end. So check out this base. It's plain. You know, there's this big black tube running on the sides of the, uh, all over it from the Decepticon symbol uh, that looks good, has some wiring parts on it. But it's this, you know, matte black finish. The base itself, very plain. It is futuristic, it's got this black colors throughout the gray to give it some wear. Nothing amazing. A lot of open space on it. And starting at the feet of Barricade here, very uh, like grappling like feet, both on the front and the back, which you would expect. Again, it's very movie accurate. I love the, the purple tint. It's black purple uh, that really makes him pop. You're gonna see that paint everywhere. So the outer uh, armor of the car. And as you move up, you see some gears and then it looks like the uh, rear, uh, rear brake lights you see on the back. I love that you see different parts of the car incorporated with this as you should. You see some of the metallic robotic parts too moving up. And I honestly wonder, uh, I bet you money it's true, but every piece of the car is displayed somewhere here, which is really, really neat. And moving up even farther, you see a lot of the same, but it's really cool. Especially on the back here. A little bit different uh, color purple. I don't know where that is from the car. You saw some of that below. But look at the front of the, uh, uh, from the waist down. He doesn't actually have a waist. But there's some of the white parts of the car as well. And a mix of those, uh, the black, blue, purple color. I guess it's more uh, blue than it is purple. But you do see the other purple parts of this. And I'm trying to remember where that was on the car. Look at his uh, torso, which is also kind of the front grill of the car. Really, really neat. The headlights. The cop car number, 643. And then on the rear of his torso, just a lot of that uh, body and metallic color looks like the you can tell the car is transformed and moved. Very cool looking. I'm, I'm loving this paint job. Then check out his lights. I think the lights could have done, been done better. Maybe uh, look like the actual cop lights uh, where you saw the lights inside of a case. Instead, it's just this uh, you know red and blue kind of surfboard type thing with the, the white aspect, a little dirty on the white. Let's look at his arms. His right arm has the uh, police 
sign right there in white with emergency 911 response. And as you move down, you see the tires, great looking tires. This is, you know, he almost crushed Sam asking where are the glasses. And then on the inside, a lot of circuitry and gears, cool stuff like that. And then look at his, uh, I, I call them claws, because they look very claws. This is what kind of makes him scary. Very cool. I like this a lot. And the other arm's uh, identical, so we're not going to look at that. It's just in a, a small, a, little, a slightly lower position. But let's look at the top here. First you see uh, To Punish and Enslave, one of my favorite parts, because I remember that from growing up. And... Uh, it's uh, housed around the wheel. Uh, this, is, I believe, was the rear wheel, the rear passenger wheel. And right next to that, you see the front windows with the uh, rear view mirrors. Very, very cool. And here's his portrait. His portrait, like I said, very scary. It uh, almost reminds me of a spider because of the stuff around the eyes. Uh, a few different colors in here, grays and golds and, and the blue, kind of the crown on the top. I like what they did with the Transformers faces in this movie, in all the movies actually. There's a few different shots of it. And right below you see the uh, uh, that other purple color. So that's it. These pieces are awesome. They really are. Uh, let's do the rating. I think the paint is awesome. I think it's, you know, they could have done a little bit more with the base, but the character himself, I'm going to give the paint a uh, W, a 4 out of 5, a rail. And actually, while we have that grade up, that's the same with the sculpt too. I, they stay true to the movie. It really pops. They, um, you know, made it look brand new and worn in cer certain areas. Overall, and I have a feeling this is going to be the same with most of the Transformer statues, but these are rails, man. They are very expensive pieces, but they're awesome if you have the display space. It is a 4 out of 5. Very happy with the piece. Obviously, like I said, there's some design issues that I wasn't a fan of, but very, very cool. I can't wait for the other pieces, and this guy, he just takes my breath away. I really, really dig him. Only 300 made because he's such a secondary character, and um, like I said, they're still available. So, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what your favorite Transformers piece is from whatever companies. After I get all these, we're actually going to do a video on all the Transformer pieces. So, take care.